Hi everyone. So suppose that you have three position vectors defining the three vertices of a triangle, and this triangle is going to be rotating around in its own plane, and you want to know the moment of inertia of the triangle in terms of those coordinates. So this is a problem that I found myself having to solve recently while I was working on a physics simulation that I've been programming, and I thought it was quite interesting, so I wanted to sort of make a video talking through um, how to do this. I'll also say that there's a prerequisite video. I'm going to strongly recommend that you go back and watch my previous video, if you haven't um, seen that, where I talk about the centroid of a triangle. The reason I'm recommending that you do that is that there's a couple of key ideas I introduced in detail in that video, which I'm going to sort of skim over a little bit, so it's probably going to be helpful to watch that first. And having said all that, let's get on with our calculation. So we've got a little uh, a diagram of our triangle up at the top left. Um, we've got position vectors a, b, and c representing the three vertices, and I defined uh, this uv coordinate system where the u-axis goes from a to b and the u-coordinate runs from 0 to 1. Similarly, the v-axis um, runs from uh, from a to c and the v-coordinate goes, goes from 0 to 1. Okay, so uh, this is the, the basic um, setup Let's start by just writing down the definition of the moment of inertia. So it's the integral um, of r squared dm, where r is the distance from uh, the axis of rotation, and dm is a little mass element within your shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn this into an area integral by just saying, well, the mass element can just be written as the area density times an area element, right? So if we call the area density and there's mass per unit area, rho, then we get rho times the integral um, of r squared with respect to area. Now, again, here's something I'm going to skip over a little bit in this video. In my previous video, I said, uh, or explained why the area element dA is 2A du dV, where A is the area of the full triangle. It's basically because you can just look at the shape of our area element dA in the middle there, it's like a little parallelogram, which is like a scaled down version of a parallelogram, which is twice as big as the, the triangle. Uh, anyway, so if we um, sort of start writing this integral in a little bit more detail, what are we going to get? Well, it's going to be, um, we can take a factor of 2 rho a out in front of the integral because you get a factor of 2 a from this um, area element there. You get 2 rho a. I'm now going to write this as a double integral because it's an area integral. And your position, um, or your, your distance from the rotation axis are, of course, this depends on the axis that you're rotating about. As I said at the beginning, we're going to say that the triangle is rotating within its own plane, and so the rotation axis is coming out of the screen. Um, and we're going to start by finding the moment of inertia um, about an axis going through point A, right? Once you know that, you can uh, you can use the parallel axis theorem to get it about any other point within the triangle. So let's say it's rotating about an axis uh, coming out of the screen and going through point A of the triangle. Uh, then, well, you can write your r squared term as the modulus of the following vector. So the u coordinate times the vector u plus the v coordinate times the vector v, um, where u, the u vector, again, just goes it's just b minus a and the v vector is just c minus a okay and then um that is uh, du and, and dv at the end right oh and i need to square this um because it's it's r squared now um let's expand this uh, integrand out even more right so i'm gonna move up here and say our moment of inertia i is two rho a again times the double integral of the following so uh, the first thing you're going to get when you expand that squared modulus is u squared, in other words, u coordinate squared times the modulus of the u vector squared, you are going to get a similar term for the v coordinate and the modulus of the v vector. And then you're going to get your cross term, which is 2 uv, and then the dot product of the u and v vectors like that. Um, and then that's all with respect to u and, and v. Okay, so at this point, I am going to do the same thing I did in the last video. I'm going to use Green's theorem to convert our area integral into a line integral. So here is a statement of Green's theorem. It's just a way of uh, relating a, a line integral 
um, going anti-clockwise about a closed curve to an area integral uh, over the area enclosed by the curve. And we're going to use it backwards because we're going from an area integral to a line integral. So um, to let's break this up into sort of more manageable chunks and think about these three different contributions to the moment of inertia in their integrand uh, separately. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out what I'm going to define as I subscript U, which I'm just going to say is the double integral. Um, let's ignore the prefactor to row A for now. It's double integral of U squared um, times the modulus of the U vector squared uh, DU DV. And um, see how we can convert that into a line integral. So again, remember in, in the last video, if you if you saw that video, we split our line integral into three different parts. We had part one going from A to B, uh, we had part two going from B to C, and then we had part three going from C back to A. Um, and we, we need to figure out basically what the L and the M have to be uh, in order to make this integral all work out. So if we basically we're identifying this integrand there with this whole term dm by du minus dl by dv and there are different possible choices that you can you can have for m and l that will make this work out but i think the simplest choice is just to have l being equal to zero um and then your m would have to be a third u cubed right because if you differentiate a third u cubed you just get u squared and so um when we do that conversion to our, our line integral, it's going to become the line integral around that uh, the, the edge of the triangle of a third u cubed times the modulus of the u vector squared. And this is now with respect to v, right? Because um, we said l was zero, m is the thing, which is a third u cubed. And um, the left-hand side of Green's theorem has m dv rather than m du. OK. Um, then if we think about the three different parts um, that, that I've sort of split my integration loop into, uh, notice that on part one, right, that bit from A to B, the U coordinate is going from zero to one, but the V coordinate is fixed at zero, which means DV is zero all the way along part one, right? So the integral, well, there's no contribution to the integral from part one, and similarly, when you integrate along part three of that curve, um, your u coordinate is zero all the way along there because you're just going along the v axis, right? And so there is no contribution from that integral along part three of the curve. And so we just got to consider part two. And you may remember from the last video that we said the equation of the line the, um, from, from b to c is just u plus v equals one. All right. So what we can do is then use that to evaluate the, the line integral. Um, let's take out some constant factors as well. So we can take out a factor of a third mod uh, u squared. Um, we're integrating um, with respect to v, and the v coordinate goes from 0 to 1 as we go from b to c. So our limits of integration are just 0 and 1. And because the equation uh, of part 2 of the curve is u plus v equals 1, we can write our integrand as 1 minus v all cubed, right? Because we just had a, a u cubed in the previous step, and we substituted u as 1 minus v. Um, and this is dv. And then we can just do that integral, right? So it's the third mod of u squared. Um, we're just going to increase the power by 1 divide by the new power, so 1 minus v to the 4 over 4, and we need a minus sign from the chain rule because you've got a minus sign in front of that v in the brackets there. Um, your limits are 0 and 1. You do the substitution, and you get uh, just a twelfth of mod u squared. Now, using pretty much an identical method, you can consider the second contribution to our moment of inertia integral up at the top there. I'm going to define it as i subscript v. Um, just to write out explicitly the definition, I'm going to say that's the integral of v squared times the modulus of the v vector squared du dv. Um, you can go through an identical sequence of steps and you find the only difference is that it's mod v squared instead of mod u squared at the end. So now all we have to do is consider the final part of our moment of inertia integral. Um, let's write it, let's define it uh, as i subscript uv. 
it is going to be the double integral of 2uv uh, u dot v du dv, like that. Um, so our integrand is, looks a little bit more complicated here, but you can still choose your L and M in Green's theorem um, to be fairly simple. Um, so how are we going to do this? So again, let's take our L to be zero. Again, we're identifying that term down there with this bracketed term up here. All right, and so you could choose L to be zero. If L is zero, then you're saying that dm by du is supposed to be 2uv. Um, you could include the u dot v if you wanted, but that's also just a constant term. So let's just say dm by du is 2uv. And so if you think about it, you could just choose m to be u squared v, because if you differentiate u squared v with respect to u, partially you get 2uv, right? Because the v doesn't get affected. And so we can now convert it to a line integral. Um, say it's the line integral of u squared v, then we've got that constant term uh, u dot v. Um, and oh, this is now a line integral, and so this is just dv again because you've got m dv on the left hand side of your, your Green's theorem up there. Um, now, again, the integral, the contributions to the integral along parts one and three of the curve vanish um, because either u is zero or v is zero. So um, the integrand just disappears there. So we only have to consider part two. Um, and so again, we can we can take out a constant term if we want. We can say it's just u dot v um, multiplied by the integral from zero to one of v times one minus v squared, because I just substituted again, because u plus v is one along part two of the curve. Um, we just substituted u as one minus v. That's dv. Um, to save you watching me go through the algebra of doing this, I'll just tell you that the result is a twelfth uh, u dot v. I just did that by expanding the brackets and integrating term by term, but you get a twelfth of u dot v. And so we're ready to put this all together, get to our final answer. All right, so let's say, um, so our moment of inertia, remembering this pre-factor up at the top of two rho a. So we get two rho a, we add all the little contributions together that we found. So you've got um, a 12th mod u squared <clears throat> plus a 12th mod v squared and then plus a 12th um, u dot v. And finally, what are we going to do about this um, the area? Well, you can just use the fact that um, the area of a triangle is half the modulus of the cross product of the two vectors defining its edges, right? So 2a um, is just going to be the modulus of u cross v, right? So I can write my prefactor as rho modulus of u cross v all over 12, taking our prefactor of 12th as well. And then in our brackets, we get mod u squared plus mod v squared plus u dot v and there we go. You can then compute your moment of inertia for rotation about point A because U is just B minus A, V is just C minus A, and we're done with our calculation. And then, of course, if you wanted the moment of inertia um, about the center of mass, so you would just use the parallel axis theorem to get that. So anyway, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you again soon.